Hey guys, it's Matt. Um, we're going to be going through how to operate a press and how to take a job from start to finish in production as far as this, from screens, from blank screens with no ink to setting these screens up on the press and printing shirts. So here is our blank screen and our very first step is that we have to tape it off. We have to tape off the edges here otherwise the ink will seep through and get onto our garments and ruin our job. So this is the this is the tape that we use. It's like a packing tape. And I set my tape dispenser there at the link so I know about how much I need. I want to tape off the whole side. And I start, I don't know if the camera can zoom in enough to see this, mm -hmm. but I take my time putting this on. And I just run my finger there. Like so. And then I flip it over and do the other side. Okay, we've got our screen taped up. This is our center line. So we need to put this on the press in such a way that it's going to print right in the middle of this board. Now, out of all the boards on this press, only one board has the lines on it. So I'm going to put this board on head number five. So I index here. The board is in front of me. I want it to go that direction. Index one. Index two. Now that is exactly where I want it. I can move this with me if I want to. What I want to do is I want to table up. So if I hit table up, all the boards just lifted. And now I can take this screen. These clamps have to be unclamped like that. And the screen goes in here. I'm breaking the safety bar so I've got room to move around. I can push these, I can push this carriage out of my way. And if this, if this camera can zoom in at all on my hands, you can see I'm looking for the center line there, center line there. Then I'll put my hand, I'll apply pressure. I'm applying pressure with my left hand and then with my right hand, if the camera can see this, I'm coming in on this clamp and clamping down and I'm reaching over and clamping this down. Okay, at that point, this screen is not gonna move and it is ready to start doing some printing with. That's good. This job that we're doing today is a six color job. We only have six heads on the press plus one head for a flash unit. I'll explain all that as we go through this process. We have head one, is our white underbase. The white underbase always goes on head one, and I'll explain that as we get along to this process as well. But right now, what we need to do is get a test image on our white underbase so that we can register the other five colors. So we've got our test shirt here. This is, we've got a pile of test shirts over here. This is from that pile. This is just a throwaway shirt. We've already glued it to the board using our spray glue. And I'm going to index over to head one. All right, now this screen is already centered on the board and ready to go. And we're going to, at this point, on our computer monitor here, if you can see this, we're going to activate head one by turning it on. Is the computer, can we see me all right? Okay, so we're going to turn on head one so it has power. It's powered on. It currently has one stroke. I know that's not going to be enough. So I'm gonna give it two strokes. Okay guys, there's our first print. Let's take a look at it. I've hit clean screen so that we can see this. That is pretty much what I expect to see. Nothing out of line there, so I'm not gonna mess anything. I'm gonna hit clean screen again. It's gonna cycle back over a half step. And now I'm gonna index. I want the shirt to go to the left, so I'm gonna index to the left. It's going to sit right underneath my flash. Because I am in a setup mode, instead of running the, the flash that way, I am just going to manually flash it by holding down this test button. 
and I get down here and I'm looking for it to release a little bit of smoke, once I see a little bit of smoke, I think I'm probably good. Sometimes I count. Sometimes I look for smoke. I like to party. I don't know. Smoke! We've got our underbase that we can register to. We've moved it over to head three and we've tabled up our press. So we're ready to register this and get our next color of ink on here. So we're gonna go over here and find our next color, which is gonna be black. Here it is. We will load this in here. And then I've broken this safety bar so that I can get in here. And if, I don't know if you can do a top down view. Can you do that? Take off my hand backwards here. All right, so I'm just looking for my registration marks. I don't know if you can zoom in enough to see them. But when I, when I get close, I'll just tap it in. Just tap it in. And this is already pretty close. It's maybe a little high. So I just tap it down from the top there. I'm applying pressure with my right hand and then I take my left hand over here to clamp this down. I've still got pressure on it. And I've clamped that down. And now when I left up, I'm checking my registration again. And I can see it's a little off. I don't know if you can zoom in enough, but it's really, really close up here, but I don't know that it's dead on. So what I'm going to do, we can micro adjust at this point. Now over here, you can see that this has micro adjustment on it. This does nothing except hold it down. So we can lift up the left side of the screen and then using these knobs, we can move things to the left and right and up and down. A lot of times you can have it dead on and then when you clamp it down, it changes just a little bit. And that's what happened there. And I can tell you, it's a lot easier to nail this registration before there's ink on the screen. Everything is set up and registered. We're ready to load up ink. Austin has been coming around behind me and putting squeegees and flood bars on and loading ink behind me. But I'm gonna show you how that's done as well. It's just a step we repeat for each screen that we put up. So follow me, we'll go grab our squeegees and flood bars. The color that we're gonna put on this particular head is teal. Now we've got some dirty squeegees and flood bars here. This is not teal, but it's pretty close and teal is a darker color. So we can take this light blue squeegee and flood bar and install it over here on this head. And it's gonna be just fine. So I grab them both at the same time. I put my, this is my squeegee. I set it right there. I break the safety bar so I can get in here to work. And I've got my flood bar. Now you may need to zoom in here, Caden, to see what's happening, but I bring this carriage up so it's easier to work with. And I slide the flood bar in, it pops in like so. I center it, 
as close as possible. Pull that lever down and you hear it snap into place. The flood bar does the exact, or not the flood bar, but the squeegee rather, does the exact same thing just from the other angle. So I pull out this lever that says Anatol. That allows that to slide in there and lock into position. At this point, I know that this job is about 100 shirts, but this is a high mesh screen and it doesn't have a lot of coverage. So if you can zoom in on that screen itself before I put ink on here, you can see it's not a lot of coverage. So I probably need six scoops of ink is gonna be my guess on this. And you can see the white, uh, the light blue and the teal is mixing in there. But once we start printing a little bit, that light, that small amount of light blue is gonna blend right in and we're never gonna see that on the finished product. Of course, we're gonna have a few test shirts before we start printing anything for the customer anyway. There's three scoops. Four scoops. Five. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Almost lost one. Five scoops. And six scoops. Ha, 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 ha. All right. My excess ink. I'm making this ink knife as flat as I can on the screen to get it off there. So I don't have just a bunch layered up there. I'm going to take this back, put it where it belongs. I'm going to take my ink back and put it where it belongs. And at that point, I've got a squeegee on, I've got a flood bar on, I've got ink on, the screen is registered, I've got test shirts, I am ready to start printing. Um, what we have to do now is we have to make sure that we're not printing anything we don't want to print. We don't want to print registration marks on customer shirts. Those are for our advantage to set the job up, but our customer doesn't want to see our handiwork. This isn't like math class in fifth grade. We don't have to show our work. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit clean screen. What that does is it indexes this press a half step. So this is exactly halfway instead of on a full rotation. It's just a half step. And then I'm going to go over here to this safety bar. I'm going to push it in. If you notice these lights started flashing, that means this press can't turn. So long as I've broke that safety bar, no one's going to be able to turn this press on and cut me in half. So at this point, I'm going to grab some tape. It's the same tape that we use to tape up the inside of the screens, but this time we're going to use it for the outside of the screens. And I'm just going to get enough to make sure I can get the whole job done so I'm not making multiple trips. And follow me under the press. All right, so we've got a registration mark down here. This particular job has four registration marks on every screen. So that's 24 registration marks we've got to tape up. And we've also got this piece here that tells us what color of ink we were using and what head it was printed on. Now, Austin went ahead and taped that up for us, so we're good. So that's it. Now, other than that, while we're down here, if we see any holes in the screen, if we see any ink coming through in places that we don't want it, you know, other than the image, this is an ideal time to find those spots and tape it up as well. But I don't see anything here, so I think we're good. I've hit clean screen, we're good. I'm going to index full to the left, and we're going to be on head number four, which is our red ink. So here on my computer screen, I'm still operating on head three. That's not going to work for me anymore. I'm going to go over to head four. I've got two strokes of ink, and as you can see, we haven't moved any ink through the red screen yet. So I'm going to do it twice. You can watch that first time. A lot of times it won't even clear ink. You can see it didn't, didn't really move a lot of ink there. It's going to come back. It's starting to flood the screen a little better. So here we go with that second, second run. And we should start to see something that looks like an image now. So once that stroke is finished, we're gonna hit clean screen and see if it's starting to look like a shirt yet. Yeah, getting there. So we're gonna index over to the left. Same story, different verse. 
So we are now on head number five. We put a shirt on there, so it will print. Activate head five. It's got two strokes. It didn't print all the way. It's starting to flood now. We're gonna do it once more. I think we're good. So we're gonna hit clean screen and take a look at what we got now. I am not gonna break this safety bar. Okay, coming along. Looking pretty good. Hit clean screen. I don't see anything that's out of registration yet. So far, I think we're nailing it. We ought to do this for a freaking living. <laughs> okay, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm having fun. All right, this particular job has a white underbase and a white top. So this is the highlight version of the white. That's the underbase, obviously. So hopefully this looks pretty good. We're gonna put a shirt on head number seven. We're gonna activate head number seven. Test print. more for good measure. Now at this point, I don't need to hit clean screen because uh, there's not a head here. We're done. We're just going to index over. So it comes back to the start. We're going to do a few things. I'm going to check registration. Um, man, this looks pretty good. Austin, what do you think? I think it looks great. Okay, that is a lesson on please, please, please listen to me. Nail your registration with your registration marks before you put ink on it. You don't have to fiddle with the design. You can just simply get those registration marks dead, just locked in, and this job's gonna come together. So this job is already good, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to turn on these lasers. Since we're already here, this is a quick step. This helps us to know when we're actually printing the job where this shirt is gonna go so that we produce a perfect result every time. No guesswork. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna throw this through the dryer and see you guys on the flippy flop. So we're gonna activate head number two. That's where our flash unit is. And we're gonna bump it up to six seconds. Now all these other heads, if they've got that green symbol around them, that means they're on. So we've got to turn those off. If we were to run this press right now with no shirts on it, but these boards powered on, it would print and that would ruin our day and make a big mess because we would print all these boards and potentially tear up our screens as well. So I'm turning off each head one at a time, except I've left this on. Now I'm going to load a shirt here and you can see there's multiple options here. This means there's no shirts that are going to be loaded. This means I'm going to load one shirt. And when you see the two shirts like that, that means I'm going to continually load shirts until I notify the machine that I'm done loading shirts. I'm on manual mode right now. So if I hit print, the press will turn once and then wait for me to hit print again. What I'm gonna do is put it on auto mode. When I hit print now, this press is going to continually turn. And that's exactly what I want while I'm heating up these boards. So I'm not printing anywhere. I've just got my flash activated to warm boards. Now at this point, I've hit print. I'm warming the boards for six seconds of board. And what I would do is set a timer for three minutes. Um, and I would normally do that on my phone, but my phone is currently being held by the director who is recording this video film. All right, piece of cinema. It's a piece of cinema. It's a work of art, okay? So we're gonna count to three, and uh, it'll be time to go. One, two, three. Our boards are warmed up, so we're gonna go ahead and stop this and activate everything. Now, like I said, these are gonna be crew neck sweatshirts and fleece uh, hoodies, so they're thicker than a normal t-shirt. Our normal t-shirt off contact, off contact is how far this board sets away from this screen. It's four for a t-shirt, but these are thicker, so we're going to move this up to 12. 
I am going to clear all the info, uh, clear info, so there's nothing on there. I'm gonna take it off auto mode and put it back on manual. I'm gonna go to my counters and reset my counter. And then I gotta activate all my heads and put the right number of strokes on everything. So I'm gonna stick with two colors, or two strokes on head one, that's my underbase. I want that to be nice and bright. I'm gonna bring this down to four seconds. And as it gets hotter in the day, I might even bring that down further. We've got one stroke on head three, one stroke on head four, one stroke on head five, one stroke on head six, and one stroke on head seven. I've activated all those heads. We've zeroed out our counter. We're on manual mode instead of auto. Um, while the boards were warming up, Caden uh, moved all of the boxes for this job over here. So it's here for our press operator, ready to go. And I've got three or four test prints here that are just throwaway shirts. I'm gonna load those first. Gives me a little bit of a cushion to see if anything is going wrong before it gets to the customer. Um, so we're gonna hit print. And again, we didn't use a roll-on glue, so we've got to spray glue everything. It doesn't take much. We can see where the glue area needs to be because of the lasers. test shirts and I'm onto my real shirts. So what I am going to do is skip one board. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go here at my load station on the computer and I just click that until it's empty, an empty pallet. Now I'm back in business. So I've reloaded this so it's got the continuing load screen on there. And this is a real shirt, so I'm not gonna screw it up. This is the back side of the shirt that we're gonna print. This is how it's loaded, and I'll do that again in super slow-mo so that you can see it. And I'll explain in detail what I'm doing here. A little bit of glue to hold it down. I grab the shirt by the seams at the shoulder points. So right there, and right there. I put the collar of the shirt under my chin, and then I bring my hands down to the hem of the shirt. At this point, I throw the shirt all the way onto the board as far as I can, so you can see those shoulder seams came off. And you can also see it's definitely not centered, but you can see that that's too high. So I've got to bring that shirt up anyway. So as I pull the shirt back to the position it needs to be in, that gives me a perfect opportunity to center it. So I lift up a little bit and I kind of give it a shake so it doesn't stick to the glue too much. And as I pull it back to the right height, I'm also pulling it off to center. So you can see when I put my hands here, I can feel the seams of the shirt and there are the exact same distance off. So we're right up and down. We can see that with our lasers and you can feel it with your hands on that seam. We're gonna hit print. And here in just a minute, once these real shirts start coming around, I will show you how to unload a shirt without getting any kickback or snapback. Some people call it snapback. Some people call it kickback. But what that is, I will explain in just a moment as soon as we get a shirt. And I'll show you on one of these test shirts how to do it the wrong way. Okay, so here's our first test shirt. Obviously, we can't tell what it looks like. So if I wanted to get snap back on this shirt, if I wanted to do my job badly, I grab here and I just pull straight back. And did you see the way that tail of that shirt came up here? What can happen is when that wet ink gets on there, you wind up with images like that. Now, if this were a white shirt, you'd really see it. This is a dark shirt, so it's not as bad.
I hope you guys have had as much fun today with this video as I have had making it. After you do three or four hundred of these, it really becomes second hand, just like uh, nature. Not a big deal at all. Alright, so there's our empty board. The first three shirts that we did don't want to count towards this customer's job. And I want a machine count of how many shirts we're doing for this customer. So I'm going to go back to my counter on this computer and reset. Okay, so we're back at zero. So everything that comes off now really counts. Time to offload a shirt. The correct way to do this, I'm going to grab here, back up by the shoulder seams again, but on the board so I can, you can see the boards right there. So I'm grabbing close to the board and obviously not touching the image because it's wet ink. And I'm just going to lift up. I'm not concerned about pulling it off the board or away from the board now, I'm pulling it up. And so it's stuck down there a little bit because this is a really tall image. So I'll just go down here and break it loose. Now this, the shirt is good and loose, so it's easy to pull off. And then when I put it over here, I take these long sleeves, and I fold them underneath there, and I'm making sure it's nice and flat. If this sticks up at all, this heating element will burn it, and we'll be in big trouble because we'll just lose the print. But we are good here, and that is it, guys. I think that's everything that I need to tell you about how to print shirts. Uh, there is something to note, I will show you on this counter as you're printing a job, especially if you're talking about bulkier items like hoodies or sweatshirts. When that gets up to about 25, it's time to go to the back of the dryer. If you don't have someone unloading the back of the dryer for you as you're printing, you need to always keep in mind, I need to go to the back of the dryer and empty it because if it backs up back here, it'll just pile up and shirts will set underneath that heating element and roast. And that's no good. Okay, guys, we're completely finished. We pulled all our shirts off the board. They're all through the dryer. Everything looks beautiful. The very final step that we have is our machine count. So this whole time, now, when these shirts came in from UPS, we counted them manually uh, like humans do. This machine just counted it like a machine does. I trust that more than I trust our own human ability. So we, this machine just printed 119 shirts. So we're gonna grab a pen or a Sharpie or anything, a Sharpie. And on our proof here, we're gonna write M-C119. And then when we load this up and do the other side of this shirt, we'll do the exact same thing. And if those two numbers don't match, we'll know something's wrong and we can start investigating at that point. That's it, you know how to print. Don't start your own business or I'll come after you and cut your throat. No, I'm just kidding. All right, guys, have a great day.